the time we live in is a time of climate emergency. Interesting enough, even with our collective efforts, we've not yet fully understood that this is an urgent and life-threatening emergency. The bottom line is, if we do not take dramatic action as soon as yesterday, the damage to the world and society will be irrevocable. Therefore, the climate emergency is something that we need to constantly think about and be deliberate on how we respond, just like we did for the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Sanyu Kaganzi, the Chief Executive Officer at Asset Business Solutions, and I am privileged and honored to be presenting to you on the topic of climate emergency response strategies in the East African region. This is what we'll be looking at in this session. We'll have an introduction, then I'll talk about climate change in East Africa, the current response to climate change, the role of asset management, strategies implemented elsewhere, regional con considerations, and then we shall conclude. How would we define the climate emergency? Climate emergency can be defined as a situation in which urgent action is required to reduce or hold climate change and avoid potentially irreversible environmental damage resulting from it. Right there in the picture, we have a climate emergency banner that is hung between trees. This was a makeshift um, camp in, a, in Wales during a protest, a climate change protest. And the outcry was, we need to act now. What does the climate emergency look like? Right there was a, um, right there is a climate protester in Wales holding a banner with the words report on the climate crisis like a report on coronavirus. It is very important to understand that the climate crisis is just in the same category like the coronavirus. And it is very important that we, we report on the climate emergency just like we did on the coronavirus. And that was the outcry for this climate protester in Wales. This was a Hurricane Lota, and it left approximately 15 uh, fatalities. The damage for property was worth $1.4 billion, and uh, about 5.3 million people were affected, and hundreds of thousands were displaced. Um, let us look at some climate emergency facts. One, climate change is real and human activities are the main cause. The second, 11% of all global greenhouse gas emissions caused by humans are due to deforestation. Maybe one thing we need to understand about this fact is that deforestation contributes to global carbon emissions because Trees naturally um, capture and look away carbon as they grow. And so when these uh, forest areas are burnt, that carbon that has been stored for decades is released back into the atmosphere. Then the, the next one is the, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as of May 2020 was the highest it has been in human history. Then nature is an untapped solution. Uh, regarding this particular fact, we need to understand that tropical forests are incredibly effective at storing carbon, which would provide at least a third of the mitigation action needed to prevent uh, the worst climate change scenarios. 
However, nature-based solutions right now receive only 3% of all climate funding. So this is something that we need to think about. The other fact is that 2019 was the second warmest year on record with average global temperatures of 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Then countries are not on track to fulfill the promises they have made regarding the Paris Agreement commitments. And finally, climate change and the threat of related extreme conditions like flood and doubts have major implications for development, particularly in developing countries. So what is the situation in East Africa regarding climate change? Uh, one thing we need to know is that the growing international movement of youngsters demanding action on climate change has taken root in our region as well. Right there in the picture is a young lady who coordinated the global school strike for climate in Kampala, Uganda. And this is after she had realized that her family were victims of climate change. This picture shows a flood that happened in Rwanda due to heavy rains. This flood left about 65 people dead and houses, bridges and farms were swept away. Right there is a village in Kenya that was submerged after weeks of heavy rain. Nearly 200 people lost their lives and 40,000 people were, dips, were displaced. Last year, the East African region experienced a locust infestation and this was believed to be the worst in the, in the last 70 years. Um, climate experts believe that uh, the unusual bouts of heavy rain and uh, the cyclone that happened in Somalia in 2019 could have been the causes. But also it's believed because of uh, the warmer seasons due to climate change generate more cyclones which provide pro uh, perfect breeding grounds for locusts. Um, the side effects for this locust effect The side effects for this locust infestation were really immense. Particularly for Uganda, we had to set aside 11 billion to fight the locusts. At the end of the day, if we are not keen on the climate emergency, it's going to cost us a lot of money, but it will also cost us lives. So what is the region doing regarding response to climate change. Uh, one of the things is that uh, the East African partner states, out of growing concern for the increasing threats of climate change impact, developed an East African community climate change policy framework, a strategy and master plan to guide them and other stakeholders on the preparation and implementation of collective measures to address climate change in the region. Uh, in addition to this, there were a number of projects that were initiated with the aid of the World Bank in a bid to, cli in a bid to curb the climate emergency. And one of these is the Climate Smart Agriculture, which uh, sustainably increases productivity, resilience, reduces and reduces or removes greenhouse gases, but also it enhances achievement of the national food security and development goals. And uh, this was particularly because uh, agriculture is the backbone of the East African region. Another thing that um, the East African states uh, have done is to go ahead and develop national development programs of action to climate change. And these provide a process to identify priority uh, activities 
that respond to their urgent and immediate needs to adapt to climate change. And uh, these were focusing on activities that in case there is further delay, there would be increase in the vulnerability or costs at a later stage. The East African partner states, again, as part of their global commitment to fight the climate emergency by reducing the greenhouse gas emissions, went ahead to sign the Paris Agreement and each of the states developed and endorsed their nationally determined contributions. And these are reviewed often to ensure their own track. Now let us look at the case for Uganda. And we'll just, uh, we'll just uh, talk about uh, some of the government initiatives. So Uganda has a national climate policy, and this basically offers a long-term vision for Uganda's climate change mitigation and adaptation plans in all sectors of the economy. Uh, in addition to this, they've gone ahead to create a, a climate uh, change department, a policy committee on environment, uh, the National Climate Change Commission, National Climate Change Advisory Committee and a Parliament Forum on Climate Change. And their main role is, a, is to ensure that this policy, the National Climate Change Policy, is well implemented. But then regarding uh, asset management, the government of Uganda has gone ahead to develop an asset management framework and guidelines to ensure sound and efficient management and control of its assets throughout the asset life cycle. And in this uh, framework, there is an emphasis on incorporating climate change in every aspect of asset management. However, one of the challenges they have faced is the fact that the role of asset management in the delivery of public services is not adequately appreciated and supported by stakeholders, including uh, the people in charge of assets. And as a result, enforcement and compliance with the legal and regu regulatory framework for asset management remains a major challenge. Now let us look at some of the private sector initiatives in regards to responding to climate change. Um, one of them is uh, the TASA, TASA Obtonde campaign. Uh, some organizations working together with the Environment Management Authority launched the TASA Obutonde campaign, and this campaign was geared towards safe disposal of plastics. And TASA Obutonde means save the environment. And the focus of this campaign is to educate Ugandans on the fact that the environment is our responsibility and therefore we must take care of it by being keen on how we dispose plastics. Uh, another initiative is uh, a particular organization in the energy sector has focused on using concrete poles as opposed to wooden poles. This strategy does serve the environment since this means there is reduction in tree cutting. Then there is a, another campaign by the National, by a National Water and Sewerage Corporation and this is the body that is in charge of supplying water in the country. And uh, they launched a, a greening campaign, and this was dubbed the NWSC Tree Volution. And uh, this was under the theme of a tree planted, a future granted. And the aim of this campaign is to contribute towards preserving the environment. And this has been extended to schools as well. And the goal is to plant at least 10 million trees within five years. 
Um, then uh, Uganda and Tanzania recently signed the East African Crude Oil Pipeline Project Agreement. And uh, the East African Crude Oil P Pipeline will transport oil from Uganda to Tanzania. But in a bid to ensure energy efficiency and to reduce carbon emissions, uh, solar power will be used for this East African Crude Oil Pipeline so that we can keep the environment safe. So what is the role of asset management? Uh, asset management can be looked at as one of the response strategies to the climate emergency. It is very important for us to understand that asset management is one of the key response strategies to the climate emergency and that we must embrace it in the East African region. Some countries have started on this journey, but implementation has not yet started. So whereas it is important to focus on adaptation to climate change as a region, one of our mitigation strategies should be ensuring that assets are dealt with in such a way that they do not negatively impact the environment. This would mean that we would need to have a climate lens when making decisions at different stages of the asset life cycle. Um, this would also mean governments working with the private sector to emphasize the role of effective asset management, but also the need for organizations to incorp incorporate climate change in their strategic plans. And this can be done through having ongoing conversations on the impact of asset management on climate change. It can also be done through incorporating climate change in country corporate governance standards to encourage organizations to consider climate change in their strategies. But it can also be done by our education system focusing on asset management. So what are some of those strategies that are implemented elsewhere? Uh, one of them is uh, forums for asset management professionals in government bodies. And uh, under this particular title, the Australian government mandated asset management by forming the Government Community of Practice Forum. So they went ahead and formed a forum, but it was created for asset management professionals in government bodies to convene, share, and grow their asset management skills and knowledge. And uh, it's, it acts like a single meeting place for government professionals in asset management, bringing together and establishing connections that may not have otherwise been available. And uh, so some of the things some of some of the things that uh, this forum does is to bring together a group of like-minded professionals in government asset management, but to share knowledge, experiences and case studies in order for them to learn but also create strategies for implementing and improving current challenges in asset management in government departments, but also to help government bodies develop and enhance their asset management practice, starting from the planning, the planning phase through to the retirement phase. And this is something that governments in the East African region can consider to implement. And it can still these forums can still both be for government asset managers but as well as private sector asset managers another strategy is in, uh, incorporating climate change into asset management policies plans and strategies and uh, one of the examples is uh, the district of Summerla summerland one of the municipalities in Canada, in a bid to enhance their asset management, went ahead and developed an asset management policy 
and there was they had sections of long-term sustainability and also a section for change and resilience preparations and both these sections were focusing on integrating climate change into asset management ensuring to see that they would be able to adapt to the climate change effects but also they would be able to to um save the environment by reducing the impact of asset management on climate change there's also another municipality in Canada the city of Corner Brook that included in their policy the statement the statement that says further as the city of Corner Brook supports the consensus that emissions of greenhouse gases are impacting the earth's climate system in a negative way the asset management plan will consider potential impacts of climate change to the community by incorporating a means of mitigating the city's impact on climate change while at the same time adapting to the impact that climate change will have on the city basically it is important that whatever we do when regarding uh asset management we need to be thinking about climate change how asset management will affect climate change but also how climate change will affect asset management so what are some of those practical asset management recommendations that the region could consider one of them is training asset managers the asset management discipline is a fairly new concept to many specifically in developing countries and one of the biggest challenges like i shared earlier is the fact that the role of asset management in delivery of public services is not adequately appreciated and supported by the different stakeholders and the same applies to the public sector in light of this it is important that the region takes initiative in equipping asset managers through trainings through attending conferences like this one but also through forums where asset managers can meet and talk about asset management and climate change this is very important because without building capacity every effort to enhance the asset management discipline with the planet in mind may most probably be a waste of time uh, another recommendation would be collaborations for asset management professionals and key stakeholders now that we as asset management professionals understand the impact that asset management can have on climate change it is important that we reach out to government but also to the private sector to begin sustainable conversations on asset management which can enhance collaborations regarding the climate emergency in conclusion the call to action would be that uh, asset managers need to be proactive and engage the key stakeholders but also we need to build an army of asset managers through training but also we need to create spaces that allow conversations on asset management and climate change to happen thank you very much